rolling the... We are rolling. rolling. All right, we are rolling officially. Well, uh, welcome back to Next Stage, everybody. Uh, Next Stage podcast here. We have Kirby Thurston in the studio of Gender Mutiny. Um, he's going to play a song for you guys. We're going to talk a bit. He's got some... Uh, um, well, I, I don't. I don't want to do a spoiler alert here, but he he's got more than just the music performance aspect here to share. First time <laughs> on next stage with somebody bringing a new element uh, to the podcast. Uh, so he's got a song for you to start it off, and then we're going to get right to it. So, um, you want to tell us about the song, what it's called, and uh, a little background if you want? Yeah, um, this song is called uh, Tradessa, and it the name came from. Um, from mispronouncing a uh, Smashing Pumpkin song wrong, which was called Tristessa. I got in this fight with this guy at a concert, and I was willing to stake my life on it. <laughs> what and, album was that song from? Uh, from the Gish album. Okay. And I, I would have died because <laughs> I, I, like, I was totally wrong, and I was so like mad about it. So, um... Was it, like, a misprinting on, like, certain releases of the album that spelled it wrong, or...? You feel like when you read the back covers of the albums really fast, and you're like, yeah. oh, I know the name of that song already. And it just stayed with me all those years. I've been listening to that album for, like, 25 years. Yeah. And then this happened about 10 years ago. And yeah. this is one of my earlier songs. Um, it's a song that I ignored for a very long time. Um... And then recently in the last, well, I guess the last three or four years, I've been playing it a lot more often. Um, was yeah, that so like an early song you wrote and you just thought like, oh, I'm not good at songwriting yet, this can't be good? Like, why did you ignore it? I don't know. It just, it wasn't vibing with me. Yeah. Um, and then it was, it's a quiet song. It's, there's not much to it, but yeah. it's become one of my favorite to play live and to play by myself because and I to play it podcasts play yeah <laughs> exactly so, so it's like a contemplative sort of yeah right. and then um yeah so i i took that misspelling of the word and just named it this song and so it's like homage to smashing pumpkins it's also an homage to um trans people just like throwing little glibs there kind of just like a little nod off to them so yeah and yeah. what's the name again, just so we can... Uh, Tredessa. Tredessa. Yeah. That's the name of your song, yeah. not the Smashing Pumpkins yeah. song. So Smashing Pumpkins is Tristessa. So. <laughs> no copyright infringement there. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Well, let's have go. it.
you go home to rub your makeup off And you think about the boy that you once were Such charisma is an all in act I'm on myself when I get to make all this shit up If I couldn't then i just disappear But don't you know nothing's ever Gotta clap for that one. Thank you. That was wonderful, man. I, Thank you so much. That's, uh, I can't believe that's an early song for you. I mean, it's a nice melody and stuff, and the and, you know the the uh, dynamics that are built in there. Like that's a that's a that's a good song. It's a Thank nice you. nicely contra uh, a constructed <laughs> yeah, tune. That was awesome. And uh, I'm just gonna move this a little closer to you here. Oh, so thank that you. It's gonna get pick you up better. Um, when someone's playing, we like to pull it back a little yeah. bit, just so you know, get some space to breathe. But um, okay, well that that kind of leads into um, you perform under Gender Mutiny, and I know it's not always you know a band or you solo. It kind of depends on who's available, and then you've got many incarnations I've seen. But that song was also touching on, as you said, some uh, transgender stuff. So is that uh, where does that um, relate into it with with um, Gender Mutiny, and is that an inspiration for you of the different gender roles? people have or, or think they should have well um it, it originally comes from a more feminist aspect of it you know i always saw um i've always been uh a very, a very uh strong <laughs> strong feminist you know and yeah. it's like um the title came from a 2008 tour from of montreal and it just ever since i heard it i i always gravitated toward it towards it i had a band before this called the Gugga ghost um yeah. <laughs> so it's like i'm like hmm you know what I, I i think it would be cool you know and i thought of more women's issues when i decided to choose the name um women are a very big inspiration for me um in my family i had like i lived with five six women and my grandfather um, yeah. when i was really young so i was constantly around women um and especially in music, I feel, I mean, you have your obvious staples, um, people who really made their mark, but I feel women are taken for granted and not yeah. appreciated. So that's what I thought of for Gendy Muni. Yeah. So. And you said it was a uh, name of an Of Montreal tour? Or yeah, song? It, it was the name of a tour. Okay, so they yeah. did a, a, a tour that was branded. I guess some people brand their uh, tour yeah. names. Yeah. No. Well, that's cool. That I know that you're a, a fan of that band as well. So it's kind of a little very, very tip, much. tip of the hat. Yes, I have them um, right there. Oh, nice. Yeah, you, yeah. you do wear your um, influences on your. <laughs> I really do. Um, almost sleeve, I would say sleeve, all, but like, yeah. they're kind of on your skin. <laughs> um, I have Smashing Pumpkins. This is Alana Smorset. I have the Kills of Montreal. The White Stripes. This is from the Yeah Yeah Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are like the like one of the biggest music fans, appreciators yeah. that I know, and especially in this area, but maybe ever. It's like you, you live and breathe music <laughs> in many ways beyond just you know performing it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the first, I, I want to get into how I first met you and, and where I know you from. Yeah. Um, I think the first time I might have met you or at least seen you was uh, um, actually karaoke at Widows, and somebody was uh, calling for you to do The Doors. <laughs> and I guess he used to do doors. You know, we're both share the love of the doors. I mean, hello. Yes. Uh, but oh, I, I should remember... have brought my vine. Oh, <laughs> hey, no. There'll be more. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so I remember you getting up and singing karaoke the doors. And I'm pretty sure it was Roadhouse Blues. Um, and yeah. I hadn't seen you ever play before. So I don't know. Like, did you start with karaoke and get into playing? Like, what, what was your musical journey? Where did you start with, well, with music in terms of performing? 
I was really lucky. Um, I come from a Spanish household, so they always listen to Spanish music. And I had an uncle and an aunt who were turned off to that. Um, and they listened to a lot of hair metal bands. Oh. So from uh, very early Nothing on. Wrong with that. <laughs> no, no, no. It's from like two years old and on. I That's all I ever listened to. And um, my aunts were in their teenage years, so I got to go through their phase. Uh, so. Uh, a lot of pop, Madonna, Cindy Lauper, and just like appreciating all those bands. And I, I was always a singer. I was always a performer. We would always just like dance in our living room, or we sing as loud as we could along with the track. You know, <laughs> the songs that you who love. Could, who could break glass? <laughs> <laughs> Family you know? sing-alongs, good Exa- for bonding. <laughs> exactly, but it was like to perverted songs, <laughs> like well, like Peaches or something. Uh, well, Peaches wasn't around then, but it's, uh, Madonna had yeah. a lot of perverted songs, and um, yeah, and those were my early memories of always performing. I felt mm. like I was always performing for people, and it's yeah. like. Um, and it took a long time to kind of get over that. It was so ingrated in my personality and it still comes out here and there. But, um, yeah, I, I always felt like I was putting on a performance, like from my early years, probably into like my late teens. Yeah. What do you mean by it was hard to get away from feeling like you were putting on a performance? I don't know, because it's, it's funny when... Obviously, like, I'm, I'm a person who dresses in black a lot. And yeah. people, like, one of my friends is like, oh, that goth kid over there. I'm like, I'm not goth at all. <laughs> yeah. You know, I listen to Jewel, Alanis Morissette, Fiona Apple, all that fun stuff. Like, I'm a very eclectic person. And it it's funny how when people, the way you dress, they associate it to what kind of music you listen to. Yeah. And it doesn't encompass everything that's out there. You know, and um, so you dress a certain way, you know, you act a certain way, and then people just take it for what it is. It's like you a know. face value judgment. They're like, oh, yeah. you're this kind of person. So it's like you like for me and it took a while again too. like I see someone, I get a general like instinct or, you know, a feel for them. And then I try to go deeper and what especially when they perform it's like i i'm a big lyrics person so i listen to what they say i listen to their style and how they play it you know and it's like you can learn a lot from a person and it's well yeah it can can reveal more than like the image shows you know because you might meet somebody and you know you don't know if they're socially nervous or this and that but then they can get behind the microphone and like put out a performance or maybe even if it's not all a crazy performance but something in the lyrics that they're singing like they chose to either do that cover or this is an original they wrote whatever it is can it display yeah. you know an inner truth about them yeah and again lyrics are really important in how you perform them and in, in what you're saying and it's like yeah. a lot of people feel like people aren't paying attention to that i pay attention to that yeah and it's a big aspect in if I like your performance is going forward, you know. It's funny that you mentioned this um, so close because we had uh, Patrick on a few days ago and he talked about how he didn't understand lyrics for a long time and, and thought about them as sound and took him a while to get yeah. into lyrics. So it's the other side of the coin that lyrics yeah. are hugely important. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very ingrained and important what they say, you know. And um, just any kind of line from a song can trudge up all these memories good and bad yeah. associated with it it's it's powerful you know yeah absolutely um and where did when did you start playing guitar and singing i mean that's i i was transitioning you know i knew you from the i saw you play karaoke but then it wasn't long before i saw you at the open mics i don't know if you were doing that already at the same time like i know you you know from performing yeah. guitar and singing um did um, do you play guitar younger was there instruments in the household or um No, there weren't instruments. I took guitar lessons briefly, but um, it was too uh, antithetical. Um, It was very by the book, and Mm. I wasn't someone who wanted to learn by the book. I just wanted, like, hey, guitar teacher, teach me these songs that I love. And he's like, you got to learn the basics. I'm like, well, the basics are boring. And, (laughs) like, I did that for four months, and it was, like, a complete waste of money. Yeah. Um, And then... When I was 20, 20, no, 21, because it'll be 10 years. Yeah, 10 years this year is when I started playing guitar. Oh, happy um, 10th year. That deserves a chime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and September will be 10 years. So um, 
uh, I met my friend Ryan Carr, and um, he had he had two guitars just laying on. The, it, it was very new. It was v- the first week of our friendship. I went to his house, and I'm like, "Oh, nice guitars." He's like, "Do you know how to play?" I'm like, "Not really." You mm-hmm. know, he's like, "Choose a song you think that would be easy to learn." Um, I chose PJ Harvey's "To Bring You My Love." It's a simple like five note riff thing, mm-hmm. and that moment literally changed me. You know, it's like okay, this is how I want to learn. You know, this is what yeah. I want. And Like to have and, a song in mind that you yeah, want to learn. And Did he show you or you <laughs> figured it out on the guitar? Uh, he figured it out and then he showed me. Okay. So, and that was our thing for like a year or two. Um, Big difference from yeah, somebody saying, here's these really... scales and chords and then <laughs> yeah, maybe you'll get to a song one day. You're like, no, I want to play songs. Yeah, exactly. And I felt like I took the long way, but it was the way that was more rewarding to me yeah. because I took those songs and I performed them as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, I just didn't waste any time. So, um, but I was always a singer and a performer before that. So yeah. I, I've done plays. I've, I played in short lived bands, you know, and I, I was always a singer. It was just so nice. I was learning something for me and Learning that first song a week later, just using two or three chords, I wrote my first song. Really? Yeah. And two months that later, quickly. I wrote Tredessa. You Whoa. know, so it's little baby steps that just really took off. Well, that seems like you always wanted to be a songwriter. There just wasn't those tools available to you. Yeah. And as exactly. soon as that like lid was cracked, you're like, I'm going. I'm yeah. writing <laughs> right yeah. away. It's it's rare that people write that quickly. No, no, it's, I always had a knack for it. I could always hear, like, I could always catch myself if I wasn't strumming right or playing right. Yeah. And let me just say, I was still bad. You know, the first two <laughs> years, it was like staring. I couldn't move my, like, head. It was, it was just really, really awkward. And then, um, and it was just not caring what anyone thought, you yeah. know, and it's like, I'm going to be bad. I'm going to be bad for a while. And then I will slowly creep up and... I think I'm a pretty good performer now. Well, that's admirable no, like, that you that you were willing to put yourself out there, you know, even if you were yeah. like, you know what, I'm just learning, doesn't matter how great I am. Like, that is, you know, admirable to have that courage to know that you're going to learn in the spotlight to some extent. Well, that's, that's a very important subject to touch on because yeah. um, there's a, uh, a lot of my friends who are just singers and are have extreme stage fright and I bring them on like I bring my friends on and it's like hey let's do this it's like you mess up keep going it doesn't matter play for you and not anyone else I have so many people who don't like my songs the, my song choices and it doesn't matter to me yeah you know ultimately I'm not here for you I'm here for me right even when I'm dead tired and I work like 12 hour <laughs> days <laughs> I'll up. show up play my set tiptoe away you know um, and it's gratifying. Yeah. What do you get out of playing? Like when you do that, even though it's like sometimes maybe the last thing you want to do, as you said, after a long day and dead tired, you're like, oh, I'd rather be, you know, sleeping. But what, what do you get out of that yeah. performance? Well, I definitely wouldn't rather be sleeping because I'm a horrible <laughs> well, I'm, zombie. Well, I was putting act. words in your mouth. That was yeah. my bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's just, um, it's that need, that yeah. need to perform, the need to, to self-analyze um, what I'm saying, what I'm doing, how I'm performing. Um, what I love about songs, it's like you could be happy, you could be sad, you could feel all those emotions, and I love to perform those emotions. Yeah. Um, and I want to really touch on performance because I feel like people can be so much better if they really put themselves into what they're saying and how they're doing it, you know, and... I feel like you do a really great job of doing that. Oh, thank you. Jesse does a great great (laughs) job. And I feel like more people should do that, you know? And it's like, um, there there were times I was close to tears, like, just playing a song. And then I go to something, like, a lot more punky, more rock, you know? Um, I'm somebody whose mood constantly fluctuates, especially when I'm performing. Yeah. I feel that I'm so nervous. Oh, my God, I can't, like... But... You got to do it anyway. Yeah, and that, that you know? like I want to choke yeah. feeling suddenly exactly dissipates as the first song yeah. or so goes on, and, and that thing never goes away. Yeah, I've been performing ten years with a guitar, probably twenty twenty five years with that all together. You know, and it's like even 
like sitting down during that I messed up a little it's like oh I have nerves you know hey, it's but live, it's like yeah. what are you gonna do you yeah. know and I just want people who are constantly just pondering it's like just get out there it never goes away so you might as well just do it anyway right and it's some uh, you know people who are decades deep into the um, musical performance business famous you know performers will say even to this day you know wherever they are in their career that if that nervousness wasn't there i'd be worried yeah sort of like no matter what level you get to that am i gonna do a good show tonight i think is probably always there for the for the ones who are doing it for the right reasons you know so it's uh cat power is famous for uh taking really long pauses during shows i went to yeah. a, one of her shows and it was like two and a half hours because she kept stopping during songs and um she did a tiny uh tiny duck from npr mm -hmm. like one of those three short song set lists and she had to like face away from the crowd because she couldn't stand to look at them oh, and wow. she's been in this game since what 93 94 so it's and just still, like yeah it's like it's not a reason to stop was that something no. that like happened when she became sober? Because wasn't she really a bad alcoholic early on? She was, she was, yeah. but it no, it was always, always there, a thing? always there. She, like, but she was still compelled to do it. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when when you first started, were you um, uh, performing like playing guitar and singing, or did you have? Um, like at any times anybody else playing guitar with you and you were singing I think I might have seen you do that in the beginning or was that be yeah so early um, on? I again I wasn't the greatest guitarist so yeah. um, I had my friend Ryan and when I was meeting other people I started having them just play a lot of the songs that I was interested in it um, and that was great you know and it's like they're like I never heard of this I'm like you will know you, know? <laughs> you introduced me to a lot I think we did a yeah. couple of times where you know I was yeah. backing up and you gave me a whole uh, slew of, of, <laughs> of CDs to, yeah. to get into yeah and I love sharing music that's like my number one favorite thing it's like hey ch check out this band this band is great it's awesome I think you really dig it yeah um, and I do that almost every single day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I never get tired of it well, that's great because you're always going to be discovering new things. Yeah. Um, and it's good to be influenced by a variety of sources because, you know, some people get too set into one thing and then they end up, I guess, emulating it to an extent because there's nothing more to, to draw from. I mean, music now, it's, I don't find anything really inspiring. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of hard. Um, I get more inspired when I see live acts. Um, but like anything on the radio now, I think the last band I genuinely like from like to 2010s were the witches yeah uh, they came out in 2014 but other than that it's just like it's been what is missing i don't know it's what are you just not like, getting that you used to get from music i don't know because what i was what i would do when i was bored um is just like go on pitchfork like read all the reviews and listen to all those albums or songs or uh when myspace was big back then just like yeah. hearing all the clips and it's like i found so many bands that way and um now and it's like i i, I know so many bands that it's like it's hard sometimes to get into new music because i just listen i mean i listen to a lot because i'm so like chaotic and <laughs> like yeah. uh i have a six cd changer in my car so i'm like <laughs> constantly like da -da 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 -da. but um i don't know there's not too many great bands I'm seeing right now, which is unfortunate. Is it like an accessibility thing? It's hard to find new music, or is it there's too much oh, no, being no. flooded all the time that it's hard to find the good stuff? I a little bit of that, you know, and it's like what's what's drawing me right away, and it's yeah. like unfortunate. Unfortunately, you kind of got to look on the surface, you know. It's hard to dig into every single band that somebody yeah. mentions or what comes up, so. So sometimes it's just like a stroke of luck and you find a really good song and then find a really great band. What do you look for in a band? Like what, what is it that turns you on to a band when you're like, I got to find out more about this from, is it one song? Is it a, is it a, an album? Is it a, a riff, a lyric? What, what well, grabs you? Back when we had CD stores, you know, I judged those covers and yeah. I found one of my favorite bands on um, The Kills. Just like I love, um, they use photo booths as their cover albums for the first two albums. What do you mean photo booths? Like those things yeah. you go in and takes a series? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they just put that on their cover for uh, "Keep on Your Mean Side" and "Know Well." And I'm like, this is pretty cool. Went down, saw. Um, I I wasn't really feeling it. Um, and then I heard the song "Rodeo Town," uh. and 
that changed my life. <laughs> it's like I I later became more engrossed, and I just did that a lot. You know, go to mm-hmm. Fye. You know. When we had an FYE, you know, yeah. and uh, a Borders, oh my God, rest in peace. <laughs> I, I spent I, so many hours at Borders, oh my God. Would you go in and like yeah. do the listening thing? Oh, and for stuff? like five hours straight. Yeah. <laughs> like I had no life, you know, read a little book and then just like peer so what through. Do you do? Like, did, were they able, were they allowing you to choose your own to listen to or was it just a set thing you could choose It was just like menu? a sample and then just go on the internet and just yeah. try to find the rest of the album or just buy it right there. Yeah. Sometime I, I was really impulsive. I have over 300 CDs at my house. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, and how do you, uh, what, which um, bands will you then like get more albums from? Like, do you have a, a way of determining like okay this is a good song i don't know if i'm going to get another album because there's not enough here like what what makes you want to buy more albums by a band based on the first one you get um well definitely whatever um i don't always trust the singles because you know the singles don't definitely show everything what a band is yeah so um if there are samples or if i can just hear the whole album before that that's great um yeah pretty much doing it like that you know um and then you know some bands just like just constantly disappoint too (laughs) i mean weezer you know i only like the first two albums i can't listen to anything i've never gotten that into that band to be honest i mean the blue album and pinkerton i think are pretty fantastic but yeah yeah, but it's just like the Red Album and this yeah. awful cover is Teal and I heard this new Black Album sucks and it's like some people just never get rid of it. Even Smashing Pumpkins, my favorite band, and it's like anything after Machina from 2000, it's just like not worth listening to. What do you think about that newest to. thing they put out? Um, I haven't listened to it uh-huh. yet except for one song. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because I saw them last, uh, last August and yeah. it was a dream come true. It was everything i wanted it to be it was nearly three hours long and like 26 songs no 30 30 songs yeah and what were they drop were they doing like a did it seem like a for the fans concert where they're doing the songs you'd want to hear oh, as yeah. opposed to like we're gonna play our new stuff because <laughs> i'm like neil young no wannabe. thank god they, it was it was for the fans okay. you know and i really appreciated that they played some songs i really thought i would never hear live um poor selena of the vast oceans hummer um they kind of did it sort of in order. Um, they went from like Gish, um, Siamese Dream, Malone Kali, uh, Adore, Machina, and then that was pretty cool. And it's yeah. like, it, it was just like a mashup of everything. And, How'd they sound? Uh, fantastic, yeah. surprisingly. <laughs> he did a really, really good job. Um, he opened up with Disarm, and I was like, it was just him, and it just hooked me from that very minute. Yeah, I remember hearing about the talk when it was happening, and he was they were doing some covers. They, they did like Stairway to Heaven at some shows or something. Yeah, and people they did. were kind of like <laughs> they did Space was... Oddity. No, it was the set list was pretty much identical oh. throughout. So and... they were touring a set list, pretty. Yeah, yeah. I and... guess at that point, like you know, you people know what they like by you. You're not forming your identity really. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's like those people haven't seen them so long with James Eha and Jimmy Chamberlain, who's one of the best drummers in the whole entire world. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, God, there were some lists out there. He was, like, in the top five. Yeah. And he's just, like, those fills, uh, um, the way he plays is just absolutely amazing. Was he drumming on Siamese Dream? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... I love that, um, and we have, obviously, it's a... What is their one of the breakout tracks? I guess you consider it Cherub Rock, but like that, yeah, that drum intro on that is just so unique, yeah. That it's like a drum roll thing, it doesn't seem very complex, but there's something, sign- um, it's like a signature opening on drums that you don't really get much, yeah. you know. Well, you hear it, um, a lot on songs like Geek USA and songs like Hummer, Quiet, um, Mayonnaise takes it a little bit back. Um, I just love songs like that, and Soma, which is like this epic. Epic, epic, long song. Yeah. Um, really quiet and goes really loud. Um, and for Gender Mutiny, that's, Smashing Pumpkins is one of the biggest inspirations because I love those loud, quiet dynamics. Yeah. Um, so I can play something sweet and then turn it on its head. And that's what I love doing for shows. Yeah. You know, and it's like, because it's, it's too much when, let's say you have a great guitarist, you know, and... I would say you were kind of in this niche a little where you're really, really good at soloing. You were fantastic. 
you but you would play solo after solo. I feel like these last few years, you really showed a more dynamic and kind of broaden it, simplify it, because simple is sometimes really effective and good. Yeah. You know? Oh, thanks. I mean, that you notice yeah. that is true. I kind of decided to stop soloing at a certain point because I realized, yeah. well, I'm never going to impress anybody because <laughs> there's all these guitar gods for generations. Yeah. And, no, like, and it, well, the song is more important than the yeah. solo. And plus, I, Jesse started doing some solo, so <laughs> <laughs> it freed me up. <laughs> well, you get on your knees and you like lay back onto the ground. It's like I love stuff like that, but you know, it gets a little repetitive sometimes. Yeah. So, Self indulgent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the right term. It's and like again, not everybody wants you're playing to hear for that. yourself, but you know, yeah, it, it's it's that weird striking balance. So right. it's I'm playing for me. I like to play with dynamics. This is what I can give you. Yeah. And sometimes it can be cliche to like do a solo on every song or even like an extended jam because people are kind of like feel obligated to clap after it. But like if you're doing that too often during a set, it's sort of like, are they really clapping for the solo or are they clapping because the solo's over and that's like their indicator? (laughs) Yay. (laughs) Which one is it? (laughs) Exactly. I mean, sometimes people have really brilliant moments, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, for me, I, I just have a really hard time. Um, just watching the same performance from somebody, you know, because people get bored, you know, and it's like, all my friends are probably really, really bored of me playing, (laughs) like, (laughs) all these songs or cover songs that I do throughout the years. I try to change it up as much as possible. I always like your originals, and I always always, uh, wish for more of those, but, you know, I guess it depends on the environment. It's hard, because I am a solo act, you know, Um, and I do like to accompany people onto my sets here and there. Yeah, you're very good at pulling people in. You build these like eclectic nights. Yeah, where it's and not... it's, it's kind of like a Josh Homme kind of thing. He like kind of switches up. Now he's had like the same band members, but like in the two thousands, he would constantly switch it up. And that's like I haven't found my tribe yet. You yeah. know, I haven't found those people I really connect with, who can be on my level, like all these different kind of things. I still want to be at the helm of it. You know, and it's yeah. like. It's really, really hard to find people like that who will go with your flow. How and, does know, that? And how, I'm not going to force it. You know, it's like. Well, no, you wouldn't want to because then the other yeah. person may not be as interested. And if you want a good performance, yeah. you're not going to get yeah. that out of forcing it. Um, what is it that? Uh, how do you decide when you want somebody to accompany you on a track, or when you want it, or performance, whatever, or when you want to do it alone? Well, sometimes I just see things in people. That um, I think if I could, if I can encourage them like to break out of their shell, um, I have like one of my friends Brianna who sometimes has stage fright, you know, but like she's a phenomenal singer, mm-hmm. you know, and I try to bring her up on stage as much as yeah. I can, and then some people who just really just bring it out. Um, my friend Mitzi Joe, like once she gets it rolling, she's phenomenal. Uh, Ruby White from the open mics. It's like yep. very, very beautiful. <laughs> it's like she has a beautiful voice. Um, and then uh, with players too, it's just again, who's ever free? So many, so many of my friends are in like a million different bands. Yeah, it seems to be a thing around here. You know, Everyone's doing a few different things. It's, it's just to... um, people who are who could get at my level and just instinctively just be there. You know, uh, yeah. Mickey Blur plays bass on a lot of my shows. He's like, I, I think don't... you got. He's done some drums for you too, right? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. we've we've done, <laughs> and that's really. Cool I love because... your cover of uh, "Drain You." You got. Oh uh, yeah. You've seen you guys do. Yeah. So no. it's been a favorite of mine, and it, and it goes over well, even yeah. just as a two piece, as I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's it's so much fun. Um, and then of course you have Quentin Gilderman, who just plays brilliantly on everything, and it's yeah. like it's him and I play so often together it's just like it's so nice to I barely ever have to look over to him or him at me yeah. because he could just play he's very you good know? at reading people yeah yeah we you got know? into that a bit in the last one it's like it, it's it's just a, an art and a, maybe a gift to be natural that way but it's yeah. so um it's so recognizable when you're performing, especially if you've been doing it for a little while and understand, you know, for somebody the first time may not catch it, but like it's so recognizable what he does if you're like know when a drummer's listening or not. Yeah. And it's extremely um, comforting to have that safety net whenever he's playing because you know he's it watching really you. I mean, I still practice with him here and there, but yeah. like usually he hits on, on the head. 
<laughs> so, uh, what are the things that inspire you most to make music and perform and write songs? Um, I don't know. Um, the lyrics, even though they're my favorite thing, they're the hardest things for me to write. You know, I, I really try to be original and try not to be repetitive. Um, uh, I like to use a very, um, let's see, like, I like to use a lot of difficult words, and <laughs> like a, a good vocabulary, yeah. you know, um, you have people from like Kevin Barnes from of Montreal, even Elena Smarset's Jagged Little Pill, which she was only like 19 when she wrote, but it, really? she sounded, I yeah, yeah, you would think a 30 year old wrote it yeah. or something, no but idea. Yeah, it's just like, so I try to be careful in my word choices, trying to like, just put really creative ideas together. And sometimes it's really hard to try to stay away and what kind of narrative I want to choose. Yeah. You know, um, I have a lot of unwritten or like half finished songs, but um, usually I, um, I think of a hum. I kind of go with a hum. I think of the drums right away if I want it to be fast or slow. Okay. And write the guitar parts around it. And then lyrics usually come last. Except sometimes lyrics just come first and they just pop up. Pop and up. then yeah. Um, They're there first. And that's yeah. The, then you got to write around that. Yeah. And then um, usually my best songs I've written in like less than two hours yeah they just and come pretty quick i know and it's like i wish it would come more often <laughs> <laughs> and it totally doesn't but nope. it's like i think yeah. of it i got words for it i got i figured out the chorus i'm like <sighs> yeah, it almost seems like <laughs> yeah. it, it comes from some other place where you're like oh exactly <laughs> yeah exactly and it's just like and i don't like forcing myself to do that you know yeah. i get more inspiration um I have this song called Car Lights, and it's like a mishmash of like 10 other songs, and I just put them all together. So a bunch of ideas yeah. that are kicking around, you're like, let yeah. me string these pieces that I like. Yeah, and, but literally, it's just strum patterns and guitar parts from other songs that I just put together. Yeah. And um, I like to do that in a lot of my songs, too. It's kind of just like, if you think it's going somewhere, just veer off left, you yeah. know? Um, Don't be too like tied to one thought yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I want to ask about influences, but that kind of leads into the second uh, aspect <laughs> um, of what you're yeah. doing here. You mentioned that you're a huge music enthusiast. You talked about going to the you know CD stores and listening to things yeah. and like, flipping through, looking at covers and judging based on that. I know you're a big <laughs> collector, um, so I imagine um, some of the influences are going to come through with um, your selections here. Um, we had. You bring some of your uh, prized collection. Yeah. You are a, uh, I've seen you scroll through on your phone of, of your carefully constructed photographs <laughs> yeah. of uh, your, your record collection. So let's talk a little bit about that and how you got into the collecting, and then we'll go into the selections you've brought to share for this uh, installment. So how, how I got into record Yeah, just a little yeah. background, and then we'll go through, um, and this will kind of, I'm sure, tell some of your influences so, in music, I assume. Um, Jack White... <laughs> Of the White Stripes, the Dead Weather, the Raconteurs, all the solo stuff. Um, he has his own label called Third Man Records, which... Yeah, you know, I'm just going to move hey, a few things out of the way in case you need to put anything that, on the table. That label you there, <laughs> number three, got my Jack White oh, um, shirt. That's what that... Yeah. For a second, I thought that was a System of a Down shirt. I was, I was confused. Well, they had the, they had oh, the, the hand, hand like from, that, yeah. Yeah, from their debut album. Okay. Yeah, awesome. but um, uh, he's always been very much into vinyl. So he, um, he had this record company called Third Man Records, and then he made a physical space for it in Nashville, Tennessee in 2009. So and 10 you've years been ago. there three times? Three times. Three times. Yes. So, um, and he had this record booth where uh, the first two times it was broken because it's really <laughs> old. So finally, lucky number three, I was able to record oh, three a song. Man. I know. I was <laughs> like, okay, finally. Uh, explain <laughs> to people what this is you're talking about. Because I, I was talking to Jesse about it, how you tried to go and it was unfortunately yeah. being repaired. But what is this thing? What does he have there? Oh, well, it's a record like phonograph booth. So it's the it's one of a kind. Um, it's really, really old, too. It's like from the 20s. And what you do is you go in there, you put in a token that they give you from for whatever you're paying for it, 
and uh, you squeeze yourself in there. I look like a freaking gorilla. Is it actually like with a, a little guitar. phone booth? Yeah, it's <laughs> kind a of little bit bigger than that, yeah. but well, I guess you had to fit a guitar. Barely. Yeah, I was like playing like this, and it's like my whole back is like <laughs> like covering the window. I look so huge in it. Um, Does it take then, pictures while you're in there? No, no. So you can use your own cool album no, cover, like the, uh, like the kills. A, there's a timer thing, and then. Um, it gives you two minutes and it's clocking down and I ha- kind of had to like abbreviate one of my originals and um, it records as you're playing Whoa, and then it minutes. drops down a clear little 45 seven inch single record and that is your thing and it sounds <laughs> really bad because like it's a really old machine so they were playing back to make sure it worked um, and I'm like it sounds like I came from another world, very old timey. Maybe you um, did. Yeah, it, and it's like it's so funny. I was like, this song sounds so warped and not peppy as I intended it to be. But it was just amazing, something like that in yeah. like 15 minutes I can do and, a little vending machine yeah, of your and, own yeah, vinyl, and I could say I'm on a record <laughs> on, a, on yeah. a piece of vinyl. Does it actually like cut it, or what does it do? Is it wax and then it press? Like, how does it? Yeah, uh, you don't see it, what happens. No, it's like on the little machine, and yeah. then it just pops down, <laughs> and it's like it was just awesome. That is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he loves vinyl, yeah. and um, he does these. Um, uh, he has his own special kind of a club kind of thing. Uh, it's called the Vault, and you get these one of a kind pieces. However many people order, so. Like, there's nothing past that. You can't, like, order past Vault. So you mean you got to sign up like, you as got a fan a, club thing? Yeah, kind of like that. But, um, like, every three months you get a huge package, Okay. basically. and But is it just his music or? Well, um, it's a lot of his music and then other bands that he recorded. Okay. 45-inch singles. Um, and I have one right here. Yeah, perfect <laughs> transition. Yeah. You, got, you did your own segue there. You're making my job easier. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, uh, so this is one. Whoa. And this is uh, this one. Yeah, we'll put it. Uh, the camera's here, so we yeah. can maybe. This I don't one's know, from show it 2017, that way. Uh, and it is God. I can't even. Yeah. Whatever. Um, uh, this so is this one of com- the, comes in the mail or something. This comes. Yeah, it comes in the mail. So uh, you pay. What is it? It's sixty bucks, um, and every quarter in the year you get a package of one of a kind press vinyls a lot of them are colored vinyls which he is the reason why i got into vinyls and i only collect colored vinyls okay mostly. very specific on yeah that. because I, I it's much more pleasing to the eye once you, you see it spin yeah um so like i can't look at black vinyls and it sucks because it makes Everything's so much more expensive. Yeah. Um, I'll show you some of my other ones. Is there ones stuff in. here? We, can we, yeah, yeah. I don't, so, I don't know this want one, you take it all out if it's a carefully no, packaged. No, no, no. I'm just curious. I, I brought this. Is that like barbed wire on the Razor wire or something? It's an I X. Guess. of Yeah. There's an X, big, big yeah. Bl- X, black yeah. X on the back background. It looks kind of like it's made out of Razor wire so, or something. He, he loves the packaging and yeah. like puts a lot of thought to it. So this yeah, a nice is graphic. what this came. These didn't specifically come with it, but... Except this one, but these are from old vault subscriptions. This okay. is from these are photos from when he was touring with, uh, doing the Elephant album with the white stripes. Mm. This one's called a Shark Infested Soda Fountain, and these are these are like all photo like, books or something. Yeah, um, this is from the Dead Weather. Okay, and uh, just like whoa, okay, them hanging out and stuff, and then this one's from the Icky Thump sessions and just them like in the studio. Yeah. You That's know. cool. So he puts together these little photo books. That yeah. Do you have to order those separate, or did they come no, with they a special come in collection? The thing, and then oh, they came in yeah. this box. And this is Vault Package 33. Yay. Nice. I love that number. Wait, that's a serial <laughs> number for like your unique one is number 33? Uh, no, this is um, this is how many Vault Packages there are out there. I think oh. they're up to like 37, 38 now. But this one's Vault Package 33. Okay. And then... Um, so there's a card in there that has information about what's in the actual yep, package? Exactly. So and there's the so this record one, here's got a moon on it and a and a red dresser. Yeah. So these are the um, Icky Thump extras. Th- these are a bunch of the B sides. Okay. So those these were songs that didn't make it to the album or the alternate cuts of the songs. Yes. Um, like Conquest and just uh, 
Some of them are acoustic. Some yeah. of them have a mariachi band. So alternate but, versions of yeah. of the originals. Ooh, yeah. it's a white vinyl there with a red label. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And then, so that is that is a unique to this number 33 package. Yeah. And this one, God, it has a lot. There's four of yeah. them. This wow. one There's Four is, vinyls in there? Yeah. Yeah, this is more of the same, more extras. Okay, then, from this, from Icky Thump or from different, different uh, areas? They're, they're all... These are called the red demos, and okay. it's pretty much... I'm guessing it's a red vinyl in there. Yeah, so this one's an alternate cover of... They just added, like, the red little tinges oh, to sweet. it. Sweet. Nice. And then, it's a black and white of the original cover with some red highlights yeah. on there. It's got and then red these vinyl inside are a bit Ooh, more whoa. intricate. Oh, wow. That's yeah. red and white. It looks like one of those things you make at a fair when you're a kid where it yeah. spins around and sprays the paint. But it's red and white. Love it. And Beautiful. The other one. Those look like some serious vinyl covers too. They're not just like the paper sleeve. They've got like a plastic yeah. insert yeah. too, and a little. Definitely a good quality product. Oh, that yeah, that yeah. one's red and black wow. spin art kind of thing. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. that, that is wow. sick. So This looks beautiful. People, it's very, if you can't see, I'm sorry, but these yeah. things are wonderful. It's very appealing to the eye. <laughs> yeah, you I can't know, imagine there. seeing that spin. It's like red and black, yeah. like color bursts spraying out you know, from the center. Yeah. I imagine it looks great so, spinning. So, um, again, uh, every quarter, so four times a year, you get these very unique uh, pressings of past albums. Um, yeah. He does new bands uh, uh, or... And it's Old particular about used. like the the type of vinyl used. I, I hear people talk about different like like weights of vinyl. Well, like so many grams or yeah, whatever. Is, 180 grams. The heavier the album is, the more um, it will keep the keep it from skipping, and it just has a yeah. better sound. So it's like a more serious uh, a p- yeah. chunk of material, so it's not going to be affected by yeah know, vibrations and things. Or, yeah. Or, you know, some people don't have great <laughs> record players yeah. either. So, uh, speaking of which, do you have a very, like, specific record player you use? Are you, are you like, a nerd about, like, the well, uh, the record player that you use? Um, it's funny. Um, so, these this year and last year, what I'm doing is uh, a 52-week challenge. So, every week I buy a new piece of vinyl. Yeah. And that's so it can kind of justify buying a really expensive one. I think I'm going to buy an Audio Technica one. It's like 300 and then another 200 for the speakers. Mm-hmm. It's like 500 bucks. So, yeah. and well, it's uh, worth when it I first if you're making started, an investment in, in yeah, vinyl, you know. When I first started, I only had 27 LPs and um uh 45 47 45 inch singles of the small ones. Um so Those are the ones you need that little insert for the yes, the big yeah. middle. Is there a name for that little piece? Um, is it just like an adapter, or is it just kind of like a... There is, yeah. but I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm just curious. A little trivia yeah. thing. So what's the next thing that you brought for us to share? Now, um, again, we're, we're getting some of your music influences in yeah. this display, because yeah. obviously Jack White and anything he's done has been a huge yeah. part of your um, you know, musical inspiration. You shared a lot of that with me. I got into it all from you. I had been yeah. you know, tangentially familiar with the White Stripes just from like you know pop culture, but I didn't know about their music. And then you... You know, shared a lot with him, like, oh my god, this guy is amazing. Like, everything he does, I liked. So, I have liked. Um, Ooh, what is this one here? <laughs> this the one's Dresden from Dolls. The, yeah, the Dresden Dolls. And, and who are the Dresden are, Dolls? I'm, they I'm, are I'm, a punk cabaret band. And this one's called the Virginia Monologues. It's two albums in one from uh, the Yes Virginia album and the No Virginia album. Okay. And um, I love that title because I believe Yes Virginia is from this 1940s or 50s letter that a little girl sent to Santa Claus asking if he was real. Um, And then um, somebody was explaining he's not real, but he could be real for you, I believe. Yeah. Kind of that aspect Like if you believe it's true. Yeah, so Yes Virginia and then... Of course, the opposite, no Virginia. So this one comes on three (laughs) different colored ones. We got a white one, a red one, and a blue one. But they're not just red, white, and blue. They're like, there's an iridescence, kind of like like Mother of Pearl type aspect to them. What is it? They just got different, like, like dyes in there? How do they? Different kind of blemishes and just kind of... Yeah, kind of this one's like mostly white, but it's got some grays and black in there yeah. spin, spun out through it. Yeah, 
And again, they're just very beautiful to look at. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah like, it's like a red, white, and blue, but they've got these other tones in there that makes yeah. them look. Uh, that well, I'm sure that makes each one unique. Like if yeah. somebody else gets this collection, they're not gonna look the same because whatever combination of um, I don't know what they use dyes or whatever to make that happen are not gonna be replicable. And is this three uh, sides of the same album? Like, what, what? Why are there three vinyls in this one? Um, I think just that's how they wanted to package it and yeah. how they wanted to have it all fit. Um, how many how many like songs are on each one? Do you, is it does it? Um, there's let's see, we got um I think twelve songs from here and eleven songs from this one. Oh okay, yeah. so the, uh, were these two albums originally that they packaged together? Yeah, so um the Yes Virginia album is an official album and the No Virginia one was a B sides one and they just put it into one big thing. God. And then oh so me like yes this makes sound the album no this doesn't and now they're putting them together. Yeah, <laughs> and she called it maybe Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um again it's a records store day release so um support your le- uh, local record stores. Uh, we had Jerusa Records. We had uh, Dish and Dat and Bethel. Uh, they're pretty good. And then um, we have, there's some great ones in the city that you can look up to. So what's and, that little sticker uh, there you pointed to? It says record uh, yeah. <laughs> record store day. Yeah. So is that exclusive. something? Exclusive. So it, it was only released on that day. So Okay. So that little that's a little yeah. insignia that you got it uh, on that yeah. release. And then, does that affect, like, I mean, I'm sure you probably wouldn't sell any of these things as a collector, but does, does that affect value when people are buying these things and selling like, them online? I probably spent $70 on yeah. that one uh, because I wasn't there on that day. Um, and then some bands um, have really good r- record companies, like um, a Montreal is signed with um, Polyvinyl, mm-hmm. and they do a, a lot of great, like, exclusive ones. So uh, and a Montreal lot of is up ones. next year. Yeah. And this is and what, this what's one's the like album? a sunburst one. What's the album called? This here? one's called uh, Whitest Relic Arealis Mode. So Whoa. it's kind of like a split album. That's really and it's only six songs long, but they're really, really long songs. Like Arabic on this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that one. This one's orange yeah. and black, kind of like, it looks like a f- like yeah. fire. It's like the Eye of Mordor is... from Lord of the Rings. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that is really cool artwork. Yeah. yeah. I and... think that's something that we kind of didn't experience like a generation before us, you know? With... Yeah. With the record, I mean, obviously we had CD art and a little. Yeah, bit not books. the same. But you know, get the big, you know, booklets, the three, you know, trifold, you know, like. Yeah, and then you get the inner, yeah. you know, uh, poster artwork. It's like double, yeah. double the size. Well, yeah, sometimes we, they put posters in there. Right. <laughs> This one's a Vinyl Me exclusive. Ooh, it's the Fuji's. Fuji's. The Fuji's. Yeah. For people who can't see, some yeah. people just listen. This is the yeah. Fuji's, the score. And you got uh, Lauren Hill, Wycliffe, and whatever the other guy's name is. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably in the back of the record. <laughs> yeah. of, the, of the sleeve, I mean. <laughs> but uh, it, it came on two, and this is just one of them. Wow. Um, so that's half clear orange. Yeah, half clear and half, orange. Is that half just black. black, or is it a different yeah, kind of no, black? Yeah, just black. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing that they can like mix those different yeah. components together and it doesn't like well, it's hard. skip it, it, when it gets to the yeah, edge. Yeah, it kind of spills over, but I, I guess it makes it more intricate. Yeah, I wonder. Um, I mean, I would think if there's two different materials, yeah. they might skip as it goes around, but I yeah. guess it must be just smoothed out in yeah. such a way. Um, so, um, Vinyl Me, uh, Vinyl Me, please. Um, they don't have the greatest variety of selection, but they have some cool, unique ones. Mm-hmm. Again, that's where I got the Fujis from. Now, are all these uh, ones you chose like bands that are influences on you, or just ones that are like prizes in your collection for some reason? Yeah, I mean, just the way they look, you know, yeah. and it's like, again, I try to steer away from just black vinyl, yeah. like always, like I don't buy black vinyl at all. So when you find something really intricate and cool like that, and luckily while they're selling it, so I'm always constantly like looking up stuff because for that one, I only spend like 27 bucks. So mm-hmm. Compared to what it would be on eBay now for like a hundred and twenty. Oh wow! Yeah. So these so. things go up in value because they're oh, yeah. limited releases. You should, you should check out some King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Records. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do they? Do? I really like that band yeah. actually. But yeah, they do some crazy, uh, yeah, artwork just like that. On like the CD. special on the actual, vinyl and on the stuff. Actual vinyl, yeah. yeah. This one is my favorite album in the whole entire world. Which Alanis is? Morissette, you gotta Jagged say Little things Pill. that people know. Yeah. Um, yeah, this, this just did it for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, the 90s were really, really good and great. 
inspirational music. Um, it, it's literally my favorite album ever. I have it tattooed right here. Now, when did you remember um, first hearing this? Like, paint a little picture of when this album came into your life. Um, well, I was in kindergarten when it came out. And, again, I was always, you know, just looking for stuff. You hear stuff on the radio. Um, of course, MTV is not what it should be <laughs> what it is now. There's no music but, anyway. You um, take the M and make it an R. <laughs> you know, um, I think I saw the Hand in My Pocket video, which was black and white, and she's, like, going down, like, she's in a parade, and it's raining, and it's just singing the song, and it's just, like, so effortlessly. And, again, her lyrics were just very grown up and very mature. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know... It spoke to you at the time. Yeah, it... It speaks to me now. Still, it's yeah. an album that I can listen to at least once a week, if not every couple of days. Um, and it, it really, put, uh, I think it won album of the year, like best artist, everything. Like, yeah, it was a big it deal really, at the time. It was very influential. And it and came on this. When did you finally one. get like the mm -hmm. full? That's awesome. Oh, that's yeah. a beautiful vinyl. Yeah. We've got sky blue, purple, purple, pink, white. Yeah. Now that's this is one that's got the most colors of all the ones you've shown. Yeah. The other ones are either one or two, maybe a split half. That that one's like a oh. that really looks you like they spin on things. Oh goodness. <laughs> so this one came out in ninety five and so did this album. Wait, this actual colored vinyl came out in ninety five or did oh, they no, did no. repress it? The album the came album out. Itself. Yeah. Uh this is a Newberry Comics exclusive, so if you're into color vinyls, look up Newberry Comics yeah. because they're phenomenal. I got Rage Against the Machine there, Julian Baker. Uh, they have a good Offspring one. Um, just a, a lot of good variety there. When did you first get that album and complete, like on CD, even when you were younger? Like, when was the first? Because you said well, you heard the singles. Yeah. And when did, when did you actually get the first Jagged Little Pill and, and complete? Well, I begged my mother to yeah. buy it for me. Um, again, my aunt and my uncle had an extensive CD collection, but I wanted my own. And yeah, you didn't want my mother metal. thought there was no point to it. Um, so that was the first album she bought for me. Yeah. And I played it like 10 million times. So that started yeah. your, your collection. Yes. And then... <laughs> That's big. Well, I was never a child who wanted toys. I yeah. always wanted CDs and movies. So like, by, I think by the time I hit like six, six and a half, I'm like, stop with the toys. <laughs> I want gift cards to the wall, to play, to just like anything music related. Like, yeah. Remember Volt? Yeah, yeah. That was a, uh, that was a yeah, by uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember seeing like all the posters they had yeah. them win it. This is where I saw the Mars Volta <laughs> but, but, you know, thing for the first time. That's where I bought tickets. And the Marilyn Manson yeah. smells like children. I was creeped yeah. out by that poster. <laughs> that was a cool story. This one's No Doubt Tragic Kingdom. It's not... I mean, it's my favorite No Doubt album, and there's a lot of great songs. Everyone's favorite No Doubt album. I have, I have a CD. Um, yeah. yeah, and I love it's that also a, great um, tunes. a Newberry comics, comics exclusive. I brought this one because it's really gorgeous, and it's the most expensive that I spent on a record, which was $100 wow. on eBay. Now, um, is that the original uh, cover art? It looks like the gold looks more shiny or something. Maybe yeah. it's just hard. I mean, it's it the original cover art. It might have been hard yeah. to see on a CD. Like, yeah. the, the, you know, they get squished down. didn't look as, as pretty but as that. this wow. is... Whoa, look at that. Yeah. That is tie-dye. Yeah. And it's, it's got... Just, and it looks different every way, and it looks yeah. just absolutely oh, that's gorgeous. Beautiful. Yeah, there is, it. like, an iridescent yeah. aspect to it. Is it... Yeah. It's like it looks kind of like clear on some spots, almost yeah. like the, the the surface level. We got greens, I it, turquoise, I like, purples. Oh my god, yellows, this orange. is absolutely beautiful. I can't yeah. stand it. I need it. I don't care if it's a hundred dollars. <laughs> kind of looks like those like overhead views of those weird like salt lakes that are in yeah. deserts, where it's like doesn't look real. Oh uh, yeah, a satellite and it looks yeah. like this crazy tie dye thing yeah. in the desert. Oh, so, that's beautiful. Yeah, Newberry Comics uh, has been good to me. Uh, what's another good one? This is also from Newberry Comics. It's just a plain red. Um, it's exclusive. Um, limited to only 300. Mm -hmm. um, so This one is... Yeah, it makes it tough. This one was like... I, I found it for 80 bucks. But the, the yeah. band and, and title? Um, the name of the band is Veruca Saul. And this is in my top 10 favorite albums of all time. It's good called album. American Thighs. Yeah. Um, and it has uh, uh, Luis Post and Nina Gordon. Which is funny because... A lot of people know Nina Gordon's solo work. Um, uh, when she did 
tonight and the rest of my life you know the i don't know if i'm corny that, pop but... song like <laughs> and it's like but here she was just rocking it out and yeah. they were uh co-songwriters um just taking turns on uh like let's see like uh get back and all hail me was louise post nina gordon see there and for Scythia, it's just like they went back and forth, kind of how like Fleetwood Mac. Were. Well, see, I mean, there were two songwriters in Veruca Salt. Yeah, and yeah. some were, did they sing the songs that they wrote and then trade vocals, yeah. or was it one was the writer well, and one person? Yeah, sang one all? would back up for the other. Okay, so like, so they would switch singing and, and songwriting. It was whoever on lead. So this one's just like a plain, nice cherry red. Okay, but um, very very hard to find. Um, yeah. it took me a year and a half to find this. <laughs> so <laughs> on a colored vinyl. Were these albums that you liked already and then found the colored vinyl oh, yeah. version of? Okay. Oh, yeah. So everything I have, again, I own like <clears throat> mostly on CD. And then I'm trying to find my favorite albums again on vinyl. Yeah. And it's, it, it's very, very difficult. Um, this one is also a Newberry Comics one. They just kill it. This is T-Rex with oh, the yeah. album The Slider. Um, and it says it here. It's, you're not supposed to do this, but I like try, if I could peel off the sticker, I kind of just like put it on the thing, and it's like exclusive, limited to only three hundred. Oh, so what do you mean? There's yeah. like the usual. There's the over wrap. That's yeah, yeah, the, the over the wrap. Thing. And if I could carefully <laughs> peel it off, I I like to. Just so you so like to peel know. the sticker off from the overwrap yeah. and put it on the... Yeah. Well, that looks like what you would see in the <laughs> right, store. Right, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, only 299 other people own this very album. Yeah. And of course, the great thing with the tie-dye ones, like, they're all unique. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. That's amazing. Because even, even between the different, cool. whatever, the spin art style, they all look... Yeah. Like a different... kind of like, yeah. They gotta like, look really cool when they're spinning. Oh, just... Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. like absolutely amazing. But some of them are more like stretched out than others. Like this one looks like it was spinning really fast whenever they do it because <laughs> yeah. it's like bursting out. Yeah. Whereas the No Doubt one was a little more like subtle yeah, and it fluid. Like they yeah. Stopped it and then like yeah, yeah. It looked yeah. more. Kind of like it didn't look as pew, like yeah. that one looks like like spokes yeah. on a wheel that are all like the, the colors are sprayed out, the black and white. This one's another. Newberry uh, Comics uh, one. Uh, Nirvana's one of Bleach our album. top five <laughs> albums. Yes, thank yeah. You. And who doesn't love Nirvana? No. You know, That's what like, I'd like to know. And why. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Please uh, comment. Email us. Come on and talk to us about why you can possibly not like this band. It's just amazing what Kurt Cobain did with three official albums. With yeah. Bleach, yeah. Nevermind, and In Utero. And you have the amazing B-sides of incesticide and of course his last bid farewell with uh MTV unplugged. Yeah. Um it he's just one of those artists it's, you listen to him and it absolutely never gets hold, no. old and it always hits home yeah. and it hurts me almost all the time that he's not here. You know, and either if he killed himself or it was a conspiracy to murder, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah, like, still out. he's still gone, you know, yeah. and um, he really, he's one of the people who made me want to be a musician and it's okay to be as weird as strange, you know, he wore dresses in his uh, performances, um, his lyrics have, you have to, a lot of them don't really mean anything. He kind of just let them all out there. And it's kind of like haphazard. I argue haphazard. against that. I know people say that. No, he himself said that. But yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like it was a defense mechanism. Well, I, feel I like... think he meant stuff but just didn't want to say. Yeah. Because he didn't want to be clear. Because I know that people say, oh, the lyrics don't mean anything. And they're just jibber-jabber, mismatch of poetry. But... I have to believe there was some, whether it's subconscious, meaning maybe he didn't know I, why, but there's something that yeah. they mean in there, whether he was wanted up for to admit interpretation it. interpretation, too. Yeah. 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 You know, right. Maybe he wanted certain people to interpret yeah. it one way, right. and other people to interpret it a different way. Exactly. exactly. You and don't want to give away, like, this is what it's about, because then no one's ever going to discuss it again. No, and I, I'm definitely on that argument, too. And it's like, I some songs I really feel like you just kind of haphazardly yeah, put Aqua together. Yeah, Aqua Seafoam Shame. That was yeah. probably just a... 
Well, it's it amazing rhymes. because like songs that I always I thought really... it was I'll concede from shame. <laughs> like that's a duh. yeah, <laughs> it should have been. Um, but um, Billy Corgan, when uh, he, I think he went on, I'm gonna bring him into this. I I, I have to because <laughs> I mean, like I'm just teasing. Um, have you ever seen that, the video of backstage of Billy Corgan and uh, um, Nirvana playing Twister with Crisco? No. I don't think I've ever seen that. Or is it KY Jelly? It's either that. It's one or the other. Yeah. Oh my God. It's this backstage video where there's like a twister board, right? And you've got, of course, Chris Novoselic in his underwear smearing Crisco or KY or whatever it is on himself, trying to entice people to join. And you got Billy Corgan and Kurt kind of like standing on the sidelines, like trying to look cool and like, but also engaging. And Dave's in there. It's like this whole yeah. backstage scene of them. Trying to play some like naked twister Crisco KY yeah. jelly whatever it was thing. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. that's freaking awesome. You got some YouTube <laughs> to do. <laughs> I really do. So, um, uh, Billy Corgan said um, some of my favorite songs are uh, Geek USA, uh, Through the Eyes of Ruby, Porcelino, The Vast Oceans, and you listen to those lyrics and you're like, oh wow, he had a really good clear thought, and it blew my mind when he told me. I was just trying to write a good line. None of them meant anything or correlating to the other. I'm like, how is that possible? A song like Mayonnaise, like, again, he's like, I just wanted to write a good line. Yeah. And I was like, I was floored with that. And that kind of kind of changed my songwriting, too. I'm like, okay, does can this one line mean a lot to me, but only in that moment? And I'm switching ideas right away. And it's like... And I have one of one or two of my songs are like that, and it's yeah. like it's a very interesting style of writing when you don't have a concept or a clear way of where you're heading. Clear narrative. Yeah. Well, it makes sense because you had said earlier on when we first started talking that your moods fluctuate a lot. Yeah. So that would be more representative of how you experience, you know, feelings in life. You're not just a one linear thing. You may fluctuate. So yeah. lyrics that fluctuate would probably be more indicative yeah. of like what your inner state is. Yeah. And I mean, again, it's always easier to write with a concept. Um, it's very hard to write hodgepodge like that. But yeah. um, sometimes it really works. And I have a song or two that are like that. So it's, it's amazing all these different aspects of songwriting and how people get inspired. And, you know, there's no clear way, but there is a way. Yeah, there's no right way. There's just multiple yeah. ways. And it depends on what you're trying to do. Okay. And another thing that I w was thinking of, because you mentioned um, when you perform going through emotional states, you know, you can yeah. go from one to the other. And there's a picture that I've seen. And you're, I'm sure you've probably seen it, too. It's of Kurt Cobain. I guess it was after a performance. And he's sitting there just, like, crying, like, very, you know, openly yeah. on the, you know, just in the corner. And apparently, like, that was, the band was like, that's a normal thing for him. He just does that sometimes. But it was even after playing. Was it the one where he's kind of like He's this? like this and, yeah, like, no, crunched down. And he's, you know, but yeah. it's like something that would just happen yeah. to him. Because yeah. whatever he was experiencing or, or expressing yeah. on stage, like, it, it carried over. Or it was, yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it was like, you wouldn't think that was what you'd be doing right after you played a show, but maybe mm. that's, you know, it, the emotions it brought up. You know, you mentioned well, that you experienced some of that, too. Well, I feel like um, when you're performing, you are what you're saying and in, in what you're performing. You know, you are those lyrics, you know, when you're um, saying something that's, I don't know, what, vengeful or, you know pissed off kind of you know it's you are that in that moment you know yeah. or if you want to be more subtle you know and that's why i try and enact those things while i'm performing you know I is it a catharsis song. a purging yeah does you it know? help them get out and then you're not let the you know i mean to a degree you know you always feel the aftertaste <laughs> you know yeah. it's like it's like they never really leave you but it's it's there it's out there Nobody in the audience gets it. You know, mm -hmm. you're in your own head. You're thinking all these things while you're singing. No one's getting really getting it, but you know you're doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, does it help bring down the intensity of it? So if you do it uh, in a performance, and then maybe that feeling I, isn't as strong as it was, so you, it's not like plaguing you as much. Definitely afterwards, not really during. I feel like yeah. it overblows it. Right. Yeah. So. But it gets it out in a big burst, and then yeah. afterwards, it's like, oh, oh yeah. I don't, I don't have as it's much. It's still the... simmering underneath. Yeah. The undertow. Yeah. That's yeah. why you got to keep doing it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is. I'm, 
um, the Bleach did, album here. Yeah. And it's a nice clear one. Ooh, clear with a that. little hint of black. Yeah. And that's oh. subtle. It's not overbearing, yeah. but it's it's nice because it mirrors, you know, the, yeah. the album cover with the black and white reversed, you know, and, and the, well, the negative. The great thing with the translucent ones, like with the That's an interesting ones. logo, too. That looks almost like a Misfits logo for Nirvana, you know, the way it's written. It reminds me of the Misfits on that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, with the big bold letters. And there's so, like the scratchy horror looking things on the outside. These are mats that you put underneath the record, so oh. obviously they don't scratch. So when you put it and it's spinning... That is what you're getting. Oh, wow. oh that so, goes on the your, yeah. your turntable. Yeah, so when it's turning, it's all different. You Whoa. know, so uh, these are awesome mats that you can do. So when you get like a blue one or a red one, like the Veruca Salt one, it's a translucent red one. So you can see whatever print you have underneath. So it kind of changes the whole color dynamics too. Wait, so this mat has an image on it that goes on the on the turntable, yeah. right? So look, we're looking yeah. at one here that's so got like a glow on, with some people. You put this on the man. black record plate to keep this from getting scratched up. Oh, so yeah. does that does the mat stay still and the vinyl spin on the mat, or the whole yeah. thing spins together? The whole thing spins together, okay. um, and sometimes it can, it'll spin a little bit more yeah. too. But yeah, but it's there to protect the vinyl itself, so yeah. it's like a nice little. Is it like, like a fuzzy nice little cushion? On top of yeah. Okay, so it's kind of like a. Fuzz, not not too fuzzy. I'm gonna touch my felt, mat. <laughs> a felt pad that you put on your turntable that keeps your records protected, but also has an image underneath yeah. that you can see through. So that's okay. You said the clear vinyls. Yeah. So they make the. It reminds, <laughs> it reminds me of. Uh, I don't know if you ever played Pogs when you were younger. I have a whole ton of them. But those little things you flip over. Pogs. Pogs. You never those little circles. You put the discs. You put them down and try to flip them over with a. Slammer, no? I can't remember. I must have been, like toys. <laughs> you know, you're, you're too busy buying vinyl. It, yeah. looks like a, it looks like a pog mat. Never mind. That, 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 that was too nerdy for everyone here. Um, oh, no, it's totally okay. So that's why the clear vinyl is you want to put them on something like that that's got an image well, behind it. Well, every vinyl. Like, you, you always put them on a mat no matter yeah, what. Yeah, you put it on a mat no matter what. You okay. wanted to get it like all scratched up. How do you keep uh, like like dust off of them. There's, is there like certain um, techniques for yeah, like there's this, uh, cleaning them? Thing. Um, uh, you can get them like uh, the special little cloth to you try to dust the needle and dust the record before and after you play it. Mm -hmm. um, and because the dust um, it gets embedded into the record and that's how like the vinyl gets destroyed. Whoa. So if you don't clean it, like if you just keep letting it play, uh, that's why they try to cover record players. You yeah. don't have a uh, like if you get if anyone buys a record player, try to get a translucent one when you can see through, so you don't leave it open and have all this dust falling. So into you mean it. you can because the needle pushes in dust into the record, mm -hmm. and over time it'll destroy it. So a translucent lid, you can like close it while it's yeah, playing. Yeah, and you can and then, see it play, you know, because yeah. if you leave it open, you're letting whatever, like, mm. dust from a fan or... Static just, just might yeah, attract little dust particles. Dust mites are going to... are naturally in the air. There's no way to get rid of them. Yeah. Um, and I think I got two more. Two more. Um, Thank you for sharing all this from your collection. This <laughs> no is problem. amazing. And I, I know uh, um, you, you do a lot of, of posting this stuff where you have... At least I've seen the pictures on your phone. Do you yeah. put it up anywhere? Can people like look and check it out? You know. Yeah. Um, we can talk about it after these last two if you want, but uh, I just didn't know if there's you something could go you want to... Um, my Instagram page or I, if you're friends with me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. What's your you Instagram just, handle so people who may, uh, maybe a are... Thurston no, a Thurston Mutiny. A Thurston Mutiny. Spell A Thurston Mutiny. A... No, not A. Oh, oh A-T-H-U-R-S-T-O-N. Um, oh, my God. That little space thing. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Underscore? Uh, yeah, underscore, underscore. Uh, mutiny. Okay. Yeah, so. And then you can see all my pretty photos of awesome. my vinyls. Um, this one is just a regular red vinyl, and it's Patty Smith Group, Radio Ethiopia. Um, I brought this one because I think... That thing I said earlier about cover albums, it's yeah. like, this invokes so much, and it says so much, and it's just her, you know, staring out, and um, titles, I think, are really, really important, too, when you're naming songs. Um, a thing that I don't like, um, like, from The Kills or The Dead Weather, they have very uninspired song titles. Um, I don't really like that. Um, bands like Montreal, Smashing Pumpkins, and... What's know. uninspired, do like, you mean? I don't know. It's just like, um, try to, 
I don't know. Something that makes the mind think. Um, yeah. Like, uh, I have a song um, called More Than a Reactor. And mm -hmm. it's like... It's not huge. It's not big. But what does that mean? What yeah. Is, what does that? But you have to that the line in the song, though. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't actually. And then um, I have this song, other song called "Synthetic Dissonance," mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of peppy. And it's like, what does that mean? Was that correlate to? Yeah. You know, and it's like something that makes the mind tick. And it's like, um, and like I, I and I've gotten that a lot from a Montreal because he has amazing these like crazy song titles. Um, like there's one called Hentoskate, like a Promethean curse. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's Swedish. Um, handles, it means open and gate means street. So like yeah. open street. So Hentoskate, like a Promethean curse. Wow. And it's like, where did you think of that? Uh, yeah. the name well, of that Prometheus album. wasn't supposed to be the guy yeah. who stole fire from the sun. Yeah. And, and then, cursed. uh, Hissing Fauna, Are You the Destroyer? Uh, that's another, like, uh, title of his album one of my favorites is the one i have tattooed here called skeletal lamping and yeah, i have no idea what that would mean <laughs> yeah so he kind of explained it like lamping is when it's illegal when hunters go into the forest um they put on these huge floodlights scare all the animals and shoot them down Whoa. you're not allowed to do that it's it's illegal almost everywhere yeah so um and then he used that the skeletal part as he's just like it's just a mishmash album i was just exercising all these thoughts out of my head kind of like shooting them down i'm like that is amazing yeah. that is so brilliant That's like really who it's like so i try to put a lot of thought in to my song titles and and you're not you're not of the mind that the the title has to be in the in the lyrics no not at all yeah no and it, it's kind of more unique if you can kind of put that disconnect to it yeah and people are like why is this name that and it's like yeah re you got to really think about it and okay it, and if, if it's more if that's a better vernacular or like you know harder words you know that usually don't roll roll off the tongue yeah you know it makes your brain stop and think i haven't yeah. heard that combination before seriously kevin barnes has improved my vocabulary uh, vocabulary yeah. vocabulary vocabulary uh, so apparently much. not <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> touche <laughs> sucks <laughs> but uh usually when i can speak <laughs> um, uh, that should yeah. be a song title usually when i can speak <laughs> yeah there you go write it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so patty smith yeah, so... Um, Radio Ethiopia, okay. Yeah, and I, I think she just looks so brilliant here, and um, this album is so fantastic. Um, usually people think, like, Horses or Easter, they really go after that. Yeah. Um, I think this album really does it, and one of my favorite songs is um, Pissing in a River. It's it, probably my top five favorite songs of all time. It's just gorgeous. It just yeah. rips out your heart. She's Here an artist I gotta get from more you know, familiar with. You know, I, I know the name, yeah. and I know... There's an importance assigned there, and, and she, you know, was well, a she, early, almost proto-punk type, but also did kind of yeah. it, with the poetry aspect and did some. Um, Just red. Nice. <laughs> there we go. Nice, simple red. Um, the thing and I know she's like dressed in like a you know suit and tie, and that was at the time kind of you know well, controversial. Kind of like that Annie Hall thing, but she was somebody. I feel like who put on sex appeal by being totally clothed up, kind of like yeah. Alison Moss Hart from The Kills, you know. But there's and that modesty like, movement that that goes on of people, you know, I guess more so females yeah. of not wanting to put themselves on display and thinking modesty can be attractive too, and you don't have to, you know, wear revealing clothing. Well, again, it's not just modesty, but I think it's a point of view. It's like you could be covered head to toe. I think she's like in a black jumpsuit right here you know but still have that powerful like connection and presence when you're performing and that's what she always gave yeah she sang ugly she could contorted her lips you know she had m m nasty nasty messy hair yeah. you know and it's like that's who she was she was right. grungy you know and that's grungy what made grunge. her so <laughs> exactly that's what made her so inspiring you yeah. know to watch her on stage somebody who can fluctuate well, captivating who, who moved with her lyrics you know contour her back you know um janice joplin another yeah. wonderful staple and it's like someone who 
as messed up as she was and no matter how drugged up she was on performances, she can always give the best performance hands down. Even well, that ties into so what you up. said about you got to live what you're saying, what you're, yeah. you know, your lyrics for your performance, living that on stage. And so it that makes come sense out, you would... D- depend, even on like whatever kind of state that you're in, you know, it will still come out yeah. if you're if you innately do that all the time. And this is this is the final offering here. Yeah. So Ooh, uh, this know. one is Tools Lateralis. Wonderful. Album. <laughs> we got a holograph image yeah. of the eyes, kind of in these interconnecting circles <laughs> here. <laughs> the eye from the Tool album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh it's, man. Yeah. It's, it, and it, that is not the special. original album cover, right? Wasn't the original just the one eye? I don't remember. Oh, Maybe God. not. I can't remember. It's been so long since I looked at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I remember the, an image that was just the one eye and the, you know, tool, and it looked yeah. like it was kind of carved or something out of metal. So these are picture disc. Whoa. I know. That's got the Alex Gray anatomical yeah. you know, wow. body picture with the... That's amazing. How yeah. did they do that? Just How did they do just picture like disc? Constantly spinning it like this and just being like... And you and play that. Has, Yeah. I didn't know if that was like a sticker on. How did they yeah. do a picture disc? That's amazing. That's that's it's, a. It's utterly amazing. So that is like <laughs> a real, actual, high definition image on there. It's not yeah. like just color. This is a, a really and beautiful all, like, thing. And all the different stages. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So that spins around as okay. Yeah. So it's, each side yeah. is a different aspect of the skeletal yeah. organ uh, body, human human body. So. Oh wow. <laughs> Pretty fantastic. Yeah, they've always been really good at the art and packaging. Even in the CD, I remember when Ten Thousand Days came out. It had that little like two gl- uh, glass yeah, things yeah. you can and, like, like look kind through, of, like, see three headed thing. Uh, yeah, three headed like facing. Yeah. Yeah, but it was yeah. like a three D thing where you could like look through the. They made the. It was a stereoscope. So there was this old. I used to have one when I was younger. It was an old thing. My I guess my dad had from when he was a kid. But you look through this little viewfinder with two lenses, yep. and you look at an image. It was like the same image twice, but they were I guess just different enough that when you look through these lenses at it, it would make it look three D. Yeah. yeah. So Tool did that with their their CD cover, where you had this fold out. You know. Yeah. Thing. Did you ever have that one, the Ten Thousand Days? Um, I didn't, but I know other bands who have done it. Yeah, you like look through like, these little things, and like it'll be a three yeah. D image. Um, so I know Tool's a big band for you, uh, um, influence. Well, Maynard well, well. James Neenan is my favorite male singer. Yeah. Uh, right up there with the door, um, with the Doors, Jim Morrison. Yeah. And uh, even Billy Corgan, even though he doesn't sing that great. It's striking but, when you hear him talk, though, uh, James Maynard Keenan. Uh, JM, but he's very K. sophisticated. Because he has like a very like almost like yeah. understated nerdy voice. But when he sings, he sounds like this like centaur god, like belting it out. That's yeah. just not at all what jives with like the image when he's yeah. in like an he's, interview or something. He's somebody who constantly thinks out of the box and yeah. uh, like, all that acid in the desert. How can you blame him? <laughs> I know. Well, like and not afraid to like uh, provoke you know uh, he's very against religion yeah. he has that song Opiate if you listen to it yes. it's like blasting religion to no end and then his other band A Perfect Circle with the song Judith um, it's about his mother who was um, I think he was like 11 or 12 where she became paralyzed yeah. but she was still like a devout Christian isn't that what 10,000 yeah. Days is about? Too, yeah, 10,000 Days and um, uh, I heard him, uh, Wings of Marie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, those are all... He said he would never know. get that personal again because he got, like, I guess, yeah. backlash from fans about, you know, whatever. I mean, but he was his mother just died after, you know, that yeah. many years of being paralyzed. It's, like, yeah. it's like, that's... Give him it's a break, awful. fans. Yeah. <laughs> and he thinks about anal sex a lot. <laughs> like, that whole Undertale uh, yeah. album, it's like right. it's pretty raunchy. He's um he used to when he used to be out in front because Maynard doesn't really perform in the front. He performs in the shadows yeah. for like the past fifteen years, eighteen nineteen years. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he would have um these like transsexuals and trannies just like strip in front of the shows. Uh, to uh, tell all the sweaty boys to keep rubbing <laughs> on each other. I just, it just killed me. You know, he was just very fluid, yeah. you know, and 
And to have a metal guy like that, I thought is well, really Rob inspiring. Halford. Hello, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody knew though, Jesus Priest. Yeah, <laughs> and then it happened. Exactly. It's like but, all this leather and um, you know motorcycle hats, and then yeah. uh, it's like, wait, that's what he's singing about? Yeah. Hell bent for leather is oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> well, it's it's very inspiring because it's like oh, I think it's amazing that like the biggest icon of like metal, yeah, you know, w- was homosexual and like nobody got it at the time. You yeah. know, it's like. That's to put that over. It's like that's well, great. Well, it changes the face of what you expect. Yeah, you know, it's like I, I even now when I sing songs that aren't, you know, the norm. You know, like I sing songs like uh, Prince Johnny from Saint Vincent, which is like a boy, a uh, girl transitioning into into being a boy or just really sexually explicit lyrics um where like if i cover peaches or something and they look at me and they're like oh god you know and it's like but then you have straight guys who freaking sing like tenacious d and it's all about like (laughs) yeah you know tenacious d exactly and it's like that double standard or guys covering sublime and like that rape song yeah, or, or Dave rape song. Even the you Doors, know? back door man, even though it's a little yeah. Nixon cover, you know, the blues but it's and all okay that. For there's them, nothing left to the imagination. And if it's women or gay men, yeah. you know, um, singing sexually explicit stuff, people are like, oh, ick, yeah, I don't want to hear that. And it's like, well, you're going to hear it. Yeah. You know? Why do you think that <laughs> is? Like, I think it's just a, a culture hasn't caught up with it. Like, why Why is there that well, standard it, between the just, two? It's honestly like a shameful thing um, for. I don't know why it's shameful, you know, yeah. and it's like, um, it's, it's just not op- massively opened. Um, a lot of straight men have same sex feelings, but it's not the norm, you know, yeah. people are made front of by their friends, you know, so it's, it, it's going to take a long time to get there, but you, you have you have to have people who perpetuate and yeah, just do, or at least do push, it anyway. Push the boundary or maybe yeah. like, not necessarily, I didn't say push the boundary, but like at least bring yeah. attention to like, well, there's all variations, you know, yeah. within that. Yeah. And well, I guess for music, it's all, all, all expressions are welcome and yeah. it should be, and it shouldn't be censored but based on preference. Again, change the norm of like... You could still be straight, but still wear dresses. And like uh, Kevin Barnes, he's very, very feminine, but all he he, he just wears dresses and bit wigs. Um, he got Patrick Wolf. Uh, he's another one. Um, yeah, just change the roles a little. You yeah. Know? And it's like um, when you cover songs, don't change the lyrics to fit your sexual preference. Your just let it be lyrics, like mean? the White Stripes singing Jolene. Yeah. You know, please don't take my man. You right. Know? But that's how the song yeah, was written, so I exactly. it the way it was. You know, and just be unabashed by it. It doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. And I wish more people did that. Absolutely. So, yeah. um, do you got a final song to bring us out with? Oh, God. You gotta, okay. You're going to perform. You, you got one more tune to perform for us. Sure. Um, any final things you want to just, you know, touch on or say before you go to the final tune? I mean, we, we went from your music history and your mm-hmm. inspirations and now the, this vinyl, you know, collection displaying some of your... Um, uh, uh, musical, I guess, yeah, yeah. inspirations, the people yeah. that you uh, got stuff from, like, s- sum something up here if you want to uh, about but, music and what it means to you or people. Or Well, I would say first and foremost, um, try to support your music scene. Um, it's starting to become a dying breed. You, you start up open mics and they dissipate just as fast as you start them. Um, it's important to be out there. You know, um, because if you're not, they're going to go away and you're going to wish they they stayed. And there's a lot of fantastic ones in the area. Some are dwindling. Just try to pick it up and keep it alive. And try to support each other if you can. And it's like, try to be there for one another, you know, and just, just support your community. Yeah. You know, well, that's the best way you could put it. Yeah. Um, so what's the song you're going to lead us out with here? Um, or, or, or whatever, finish off with. <laughs> you're not leading us anywhere, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to do Synthetic Dissonance. And this is one of the ones that I kind of wrote in like an hour or two. Now, um, was this something you wrote uh, early on or a more recent one? Or This one was about two years ago. Okay. So like more two, recent. Two that, and that, a half that, years ago. The first one you played was an early song you said you kind of yeah, put off to the side. Yeah, that one's like uh, 10 years old. So we're getting so. a chronology here of like 
early on song. Now this is yeah. a little perfect. more current one. Perfect opening and end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bookends. Yeah. yeah. I love that song. Simon and Garfunkel bookends. Oh, look, I don't it, know it. look it up. It's a great I'm not song. Not too huge up on them. <laughs> Alrighty. So, so this is synthetic dissonance by Gender Mutiny. Yes. This one's an original. Okay. Four, three, two, one. The story begins on a Saturday. Yes, I've been in love just once before. Though I feel a disconnect. Challenge is more than just an echo. I brought my heels on daydreams. Oh man, some days you feel like a chore. But when you reappear, oh dear. Progression that had a lot more going on, and yeah. the first one you said very simple, you know, kind of one yeah. note droning thing, and that was, you know, that was more of a full <laughs> song. It was, not the other one was a full song, but you can see there's more dynamics and shifts going on in that one. Yeah. So it's, it's clear that they were written far yeah. apart. You know, not to say one's better than the other, just different. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was great, and that one did have the song title in the lyrics, yeah, which yeah. I noticed. Right. Synthetic, which dissonance. is really really rare <laughs> <laughs> for my song titles. Well, great. Thank you so much for coming out and for Thank doing the show here. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, this was an, uh, a really cool, um, uh, you know, kind of double episode where we get uh, your your experience and your performing and your journey with music, but then also you've got this whole world of, of colored vinyls and, yeah. and collection, which is awesome. <laughs> um, we definitely want to have you on again and have you explain more of these, you know, as we go yeah. um, and, and bring some more of your collection. It's, it's, it's beautiful to see all this stuff on display. And for anybody who's only listening, Listening, um, you can check out his uh, Instagram. Yeah, we'll we have link on. it too. And when yeah. we post this episode, we'll link the. Yeah. We'll that. link the stuff so you can see what we were talking about because uh, he's got a wonderful collection here and really good insights too uh, on Thank music you. in general and what it means to you and hopefully means to other people or maybe maybe means to other people and you know you brought a lot here and this has yeah. been a great episode. Thank um, you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Any final <laughs> words or will we leave it there? Uh, let's leave it there. <laughs> right. Cool. Kirby Thurston of Gender Mutiny. Check out his uh, songs. Uh, check out a performance sometime. You'll see things going on around town. Um, and go to your open mics. Yes, go to the open mics. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. We love you all. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll meet again on next stage. You can't get away.